Greetings, JC here for Interface. Today we're going to talk about buying used equipment, what to look for and what to avoid. I'm on eBay's main page right now and as you can see I did a search for stereo. I got 207,283 results. Chances are that particular component or part that you're looking for is in here. I'm going to show you how to find it and get your money's worth. eBay can be a great place to find used audio equipment. You'll notice here that I did a search for cassette deck and came up with 3,358 different listings. Now, if you were looking for a tape deck, that's an awful lot of stuff to look through to find one. You can narrow that down quite a bit by simply going over here and clicking Show Buy It Now Only. The difference between a Buy It Now listing and an auction listing is that in Buy It Now, you just simply get a button that you click and you pay the seller whatever price he wants for that piece of equipment. Some Buy It Now auctions have it where you can make an offer on the item and if the seller takes it, it's yours. I find that buying things with a Buy It Now listing instead of an auction is a lot more straightforward. Whereas if you bid on something, there's always a chance you're going to lose the bid and sometimes the bidding can get quite heated toward the end of the auction and you might end up paying a lot more for the item than you had intended originally. So to start, look at the Buy It Now listings. If you do find an item that is up for auction, in other words you have to bid on it and you'd like to buy it now, check and see if there are any bids. If there are no bids already, you may be able to contact the seller and ask them what price they would sell it for in a buy it now style auction. If there are no bids and the seller goes for it, you might be able just to pay whatever they want and get your item without having to bid. Let's take a few minutes and talk about what you should look for when you see an item listed on eBay. This is a very good listing from a very reputable seller. I've done a lot of business with this particular seller and I can tell you that uh, every item that he actually lists on eBay has been thoroughly checked and serviced and is guaranteed to work when it arrives and he does offer a three-day money-back guarantee which is a very good thing. It's a buy it now. You can also make an offer. Uh, you might be able to get it for a slightly lower price. He also lists exactly how much it will cost to ship the item and right up here at the top it's uh, saying that there is a three-day money-back guarantee and he does honor his three-day money-back guarantee. I had one piece of equipment that I ordered that arrived in uh, not working condition and uh, that was taken care of immediately and uh, very professionally I might add. So as you can see when you jump on here you see top rated seller you see 99.9% uh, .9 positive feedback you know you're dealing with somebody who isn't uh, out to uh, gouge folks or is trying to sell you a piece of junk telling you that it works when it doesn't. Now, how can you tell on other listings when you're dealing uh, with uh, a seller who is reputable? Well, the main thing to look for is honesty. If we scroll down here, we see that we have a very nice description of this tape deck, and then he has posted many great pictures of this particular tape deck, and you can zoom in on any one of them and uh, uh, get a closer look if you want to. If you come across a listing where there is one picture, it is very fuzzy, and you can't actually make out the piece of equipment, beware. Also, look for uh, equipment that's clean. Don't buy anything that's dirty. It always amazes me when I'm looking through eBay for uh, vintage audio equipment that some people will not even dust the cover off before they list the item. The other thing to look for is in the description, if you see something that says plugged in, powered up, but no further testing was done, avoid it. Most audio equipment will appear to power up even if it's completely dead. So that is not a test. You're, it's just like buying a piece of equipment that hasn't been tested at all. As a matter of fact, in the case of tape decks, you have no idea how that tape deck performs until you actually put a tape in it. So if the seller says that they did no testing other than powering it up, avoid that particular item as well. Make sure you take the time to read the fine print on listings on eBay or any other online auction service. These will clearly outline what your rights are as a buyer and what the seller is willing to do if there should be some sort of problem with the transaction. Another thing to look for is shipping and handling charges. 
eBay and other online auction places allow the seller to charge whatever they want to for shipping and handling. If this seems unreasonable, move on. So far we've mainly talked about eBay, but there are plenty of places to find audio equipment online. Amazon is a good place to look. Not only do they sell new audio equipment, they also sell used audio equipment, and you can find refurbished items sometimes. A refurbished item is an item that was returned to the factory for service and has been put up for resale. And most of the times, these are just as good as new at a quarter of the price. Let's talk a little bit about some of the issues you can run into with vintage audio gear. Let's say you find a very nice amplifier in an online sale or maybe at a thrift shop, church sale, or yard sale. It looks clean. It looks like it's in very good condition. You get it home, you turn it on, and either you have a very loud hum mixed with the audio, a very loud hum with no audio, or no audio at all. What's the problem here? What you've run into are failing capacitors. And any piece of audio gear more than 20 years old is prone to have electrolytic capacitors in the amplifier circuit or the power supply circuit that fail. If this happens, the only way to fix this is to replace those capacitors with new ones. If you're very handy with a soldering iron and you happen to have a schematic, you can do that yourself. However, most of us can't do that and will need to find a local service shop that offers a recapping service. If you find a piece of audio gear that is listed as being recapped and refurbished, you should probably be all right for another 20 or 30 years. I restore old tape decks for fun, and I buy a lot of them online and at thrift stores and yard sales. And I can tell you that buying a used tape deck is always a gamble, whether it be a cassette deck like this one or a nice open reel machine. The main issue that you have to worry about with tape decks is the condition of the belts and other rubber parts in the drive system. Rubber breaks down over time, and any tape deck that's more than 10 or 20 years old has to be suspect for bad belts. Sometimes you can find a listing online where the seller has actually replaced the belts, and these are usually generally okay to go after. Another issue to worry about with tape decks is the condition of the actual playback and recording heads. If a tape deck has had a lot of use, a notch can get worn in those heads, and this can greatly reduce the audio performance of the machine. And in extreme cases, you'll get what's called an open head, where the head is so worn that it doesn't actually function properly anymore electronically and creates a lot of hum and static noise. If you find a nice looking tape deck in a thrift shop or at a yard sale, make sure to take the time to actually look at the heads themselves before you buy it. Make sure that the heads do not have deep cut notches in them. Also, check carefully that the pinch rollers are not particularly dirty. You can always tell if a tape deck has been taken care of if the pinch rollers appear to be clean. Undoubtedly, the hottest section of the used audio gear market today is turntables. Turntables are a very hot item right now with the rebirth of vinyl. There are plenty of new turntables being manufactured, but they tend to fall into two categories. Either they're extremely cheap and cheaply made, or really nice turntables that cost four and five hundred dollars and up, and there's not much in between. Therefore, a great place to look for a good, reliable turntable for playing back your vinyl collection is the vintage market. However, do beware. There's a lot of price gouging going on, especially on eBay. I've seen turntables that were worth maybe $50 or $100 that were being sold for $250 or $300. So make sure you do your research on any particular model before you click buy it now or make a bid. Also, keep in mind that any turntable that you buy, if it's more than 10 years old, you are going to want to replace the cartridge and the stylus, unless the seller specifically states that the stylus and cartridge have been replaced recently. Also, a belt drive turntable that's more than 10 years old will most likely need a replacement belt. So do a little research and find out if you can get replacement belts for whatever turntable it is you're planning to buy before you buy it. And then you can order these parts as soon as you order your turntable. They'll all arrive at the same time.
Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful as you work your way through the world of used vintage audio. Yes, there are pitfalls. There's a lot of junk out there. There are dishonest sellers, so it's buyer beware. However, you can find treasure aplenty if you look carefully and do your research before you click the bid or buy it now button. For Interface, I'm JC.